Fulana, welcome back to our lessons. Wilfred Mumani Onkani hyphen Kiongozi, our YouTube account. Please continue subscribing and let us continue learning. We are still looking at the first chapter in Fulana. That is the introduction to biology. And in our previous lesson, I left behind a quiz which I want us to begin with. And that question was compare and contrast the characteristics of living organisms in plants and animals. On this whiteboard here, I have written four characteristics of living organisms on this end and the other four on this end. One thing I will tell you is most of, actually, these ones that are written on this end are those ones that we cannot see very sharp differences between plants and animals. And these ones on this side, we can see differences. And so, I would want us to discuss each of these characteristics given differences and in case of a similarity, we do the same. We start with the first characteristic which is nutrition. It is true, we say that all living organisms acquire and utilize nutrients. But, plants manufacture their own food. Plants manufacture their own food, whether it is by the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, this is for green plants. Or chemosynthesis. Chemosynthesis, which is for non-green plants. So plants manufacture their own food or synthesize their own food. But animals, animals depend on ready-made, ready-made food. Animals depend on plants or even other animals for food. That is the difference. The next one is gaseous exchange. Gaseous exchange is the exchange of respiratory surface or the, 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 the passing of respiratory surface uh, uh, gases across respiratory surfaces. And respiratory gases, we said they are carbon dioxide and oxygen. How different is it in both plants and animals? The difference is plants take in carbon dioxide. and give out oxygen because oxygen is the waste product of the process called photosynthesis but carbon dioxide is a raw material carbon dioxide in plants is important while oxygen is not very important it is given out as a waste product in animals animals take in oxygen which is used in the processes like respiration and give out carbon for oxides. That is what happens in and so that is a sharp difference. We are at number three irritability. Irritability is the ability of living organisms to detect changes in the environment and respond appropriately. Now, plants, we said in our previous lesson that plants are less irritable because they respond slowly to changes, changes in the environment. So they respond slowly. It is different from how animals behave. Animals, animals respond quickly or even rapidly, rapidly to changes in their environment. So that's also another sharp difference. The last one is movements. The last one is movements. Remember from our previous lesson, we said animals, animals locomote. To locomote means they have, they carry out what you call 
delocalized, delocalized movements. In this case, the whole organism moves from one point to another. There are reasons why animals move, search for water, search for nutrients or food, look for mates, run away or escape what we call dangerous or harmful stimulus or uh, changes in the environment and so forth and so forth. But plants, plants also grow, but they don't grow more. Plants move by growing. I give an example of when a plant has increased in size or in height. That means, although it has not moved from that point to another point, because you not see a plant moving from a point to another point looking for water or anything, it is only either roots are going to deepen into the ground, or it will become taller or increase in height. That is what we call localized movements. Localized movements. So the first four characteristics are giving us what we call sharp differences. When it comes to respiration, all living organisms respire. And respiration requires oxygen. For both plants and animals, oxygen is useful. When it is excretion, and I still remind you, don't say excretion. Many students misspell excretion as excretion, which is wrong to say excretion. Excretion, the removal of waste products of metabolism from the cells of a living organism is what we call excretion. So all organisms, both plants and animals, excrete. Growth and development, all living organisms grow and develop. Then reproduction, organisms that are mature, remember in this case we say mature organisms. Living organisms that are mature give rise to young ones of the same kind. That is the end of our quiz. I would want us to move on to the next part. Actually, this next part is uh, uh, very interesting. We're going to study about collection of specimens. In biology, we use specimens. We may collect some animals, some plants that we use in the lab for what we call study or examination. This is a new part, and please, as usual, have somewhere to write. Collection of specimens. Collection, collection of specimens. We first of all write the meaning of a specimen. A specimen. What is a specimen? This is a part. This is a part. This is a part. Of an organism, of an organism, or the whole organism, the whole organism being studied, being studied, or being examined is a part or the whole organism being studied. This is what we call a specimen. It can be an insect, it can be a rodent, it can be any organism that is in question. Maybe someone wants to discover about some processes in this organism or even the structures and so forth. So this is what we call a specimen. Now, uh, the collector, the collector of this specimen, or specimens, the collector of specimens, Uh, should know the right apparatus, the right apparatus, apparatus or instruments, the right apparatus or instruments to use, to use 
when collecting collecting and handling of specimens collecting and handling of specimens for the safety for the safety of the specimen as well as as well as that of the collector remember specimens some of them are injurious injurious when they are injurious we call them harmful and in short we can say dangerous for example if you want to use uh, bees in your study and you want to collect a bee this is a very dangerous uh, uh, specimen it can sting you so you must use the right tools to collect it and handle it if you are collecting a plant for example the stinging nettle which is also very injurious it can harm you you must use the correct apparatus or instruments in collecting it what about that the safety of the specimen the specimen must always remain in its state before you take it for study or examination because if you in any way tamper with it or even kill it you will have distorted the structures and it will be difficult for you to examine through that and that's why we are saying correct or the right apparatus or instruments or paraphernalia should be used in collection and handling of the specimen now the next part uh, last part is about the precautions to take during collection and handling of specimens precautions precautions applied in collection and handling of specimens precautions precautions to take precautions to take during collecting or collection come handling handling of uh, handling and observation observation of specimens precautions precautions are taken during uh, precautions to take or taken during collection handling and observation of specimens number one collect one collect only actually it should be capital letters only and underlined only the required number the required number the required number of specimens or specimens collect only the required number of specimens to avoid wastage to avoid wastage if you want to do a study and maybe you need three grasshoppers, don't go collecting a million, a thousand grasshoppers. You'll do what you call wasted and you'll bring about what you call ecological imbalance. Number two, do not harm, do not harm the specimens. Do not harm the specimens during collection. During collection. Why? Do not harm the specimens during collection because these may distort. Because these may distort. These may distort their features. Their features. You are collecting grasshoppers or cockroaches for study, and then you harm them. You break their limbs. You are not able to observe well the walking legs or even the antennae or the wings or anything so please ensure you don't harm them so that you don't distort their structure do not destroy their natural habitat number three do not destroy their natural habitats 
natural habitats. So ensure the natural habitat of specimens is maintained. Because after the study, now the fourth point. Return live specimens back to their habitats after study. Actually, where possible? Where possible? Um, this is to maintain, to maintain, to maintain what you call ecological balance. Ecological balance. Balance. Return live specimens, and actually that is, if it is possible, back to their habitats. Habitat is where they live or where you collected them from to maintain what you call ecological balance. Then number five, second last, number five, Handle, we are talking about this. Handle the harmful, harmful, we also talked about another terminology or other two terminologies. Harmful. We say handle harmful, injurious, or dangerous specimens. Specimens with care. That means you have to be very careful so that these dangerous specimens or harmful or injurious. Do not injure you. So use the right tools actually to handle them. Then finally, number six, the last one. The last one is about highly mobile. Number six, highly mobile, highly mobile specimens. Specimens. High mobile specimens should be immobilized. Should be immobilized uh, using suitable chemicals. Using suitable chemicals. There are, there are specimens that are very, very mobile. They will not allow you to be able to do a proper examination. So you must use suitable chemicals to remove them. And actually, these chemicals, you can give example. We have two examples of chemicals you can use to immobilize highly mobile specimens. We have chloroform. Chloroform is also called tetrachlorobethane. Chloroform, e.g. Chloroform, which is also called tetra chloro. Chloromethane. You can also use another chemical we call uh, diethyl ether. Di ethyl ether. Diethyl diethyl ether. In another language, we call it ethoxythane. Ethoxythane. These are the two chemicals that are friendly to immobilize very highly mobile specimen. This is to give you time and enough uh, ample time for you to be able to study them through. Now, this is the end of our lesson. In our next lesson, we shall discuss about the apparatus that we use in collection and handling of specimens. I will want you to make very good diagrams in the next lesson and, but ensure, you always write the notes that we give you in class. Continue subscribing to my account, new friend Momani, or can hyphen Continue learning with me. Bye.